What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out the rise and fall and rise again of the Hell in the Cell. We all know the Hell in the Cell started off as something iconic, something legendary, something quite dangerous and hadn't really been seen before. Uh, you know, back in the day, back in the the early Attitude Era days, and then. It kind of lost its novelty many, many years later. It became a pay-per-view. And once it became a pay-per-view, it started to lose its specialness. And then we, you know, we didn't have blood with it, which I, I feel like any Hell in a Cell for the most part should involve some type of blood, some type of physical trauma and pain involved in it because it's a very demonic structure. This is a match type that was built to solidify the ending of a major feud and then they turned the sail red and it, it just it fell off a cliff very quickly but it's coming back again with drew versus cm punk at bad blood and uh i'm looking forward to it because i do think they're gonna do the hell in the cell justice this go around so we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support let's get right into this video man in just a few days, live from Atlanta, oh, Georgia, the 10 month long feud between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre is finally coming to an end at Bad Blood. Yes. After a 20 year hiatus, Bad Blood is finally back as a pay per view. And with it, just like every other Bad Blood in history, we're getting a Hell in a Cell match. But for the first time in a long time, Hell in a Cell finally feels right again. Yeah. The first ever Hell in a Cell match took place at Bad Blood in 1997 between The Undertaker and Shawn mm -hmm. Michaels. What well, could have easily been just another cage match, but with the roof and a ringside area, it ended up being one of the greatest matches of all time and ended mm -hmm. up setting in motion what would go on to be, in my opinion, the greatest match type in wrestling history. Hell in a Cell for me has always been my favorite match type of all time. Ever Facts. since I was a kid, this was my match. If a Hell in a Cell was going down, I was trying to order that pay-per-view. If a Hell in a Cell was going down, you just knew that shit was going down. By the time I'd become a wrestling fan around 0405, this was the match in the WWE. But by the time I had become a wrestling fan, there was so much lore around this match type that as a kid, it almost seemed like some next mythical wrestling match. And growing up, I was- You knew when this match was announced, in any type of feud that was being set up, you knew somebody was going to either A, bleed, someone was probably going to either B, get thrown off the top of the cell, or either C, they were going to go to the top of the cell themselves and may fall through it, or D, all of the above. <laughs> you knew you was going to be in for some carnage, so you always got hype for it. I'd see clips and videos of Sean and Sager killing each other in the first ever match. Me and my friends would gather around and watch oh. 240p quality videos of Undertaker throwing mankind off the top of the cell. <laughs> which, as we all know, this was a rite of passage growing up. Yeah. Yo, I used to be so obsessed with this Hell in a Cell match. I used to have the video file downloaded on my PSP just in case I'm in the middle of nowhere and I just feel like watching mankind die again. So as we learned the history of the match type, as we watched the clips over and over again, it just added to the magic of this magical match type where it felt like anything and everything could happen. And honestly, it did happen. People getting thrown off the top, falling into tables, the ring breaking, weapons yep. on fire. I remember the day I found out that there was once a six-man Hell in a Cell mm -hmm. match in 2000 featuring five of the greatest wrestlers ever and rikishi and i couldn't believe it i was like wait this actually happened yeah i would pray as a kid that maybe one day just one day we would get the six man hell in a cell again hell in a cell matches just had so much lore because more often than not every hell in a cell in one way or another at that point hit yeah there were a few shitters like bossman and taker and mm -hmm. a few matches that didn't really need a hell in a cell but mm -hmm. more often than not hell in a cell meant something it made careers and it was a definitive feud ender yeah. It was just the match type at the point. Even so much so that when me and my friends would play SVR, yeah, the first few matches we would do a TLC match or a hardcore match or whatever, but we knew when it was time to settle something, when it was time for the finale, it was time for Hell in a Cell. Yeah. And everyone knew that match was not going to end until someone gets tossed <laughs> off and someone goes through the middle. The first Cell match I remember the build to as a kid was Batista versus Triple H in 2005, and I was so excited. This was a good one too. This was a good one, and, and this was, I guess, the 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 ending point of their major feud of, you know, Triple H finally realizing that Batista, he's the guy now. Um, and he, he couldn't let that go. You know, he had lost at that year's WrestleMania. He was trying to get the title back, and this was that moment. And they solidified as Batista 
the being the next guy up for that time period. It's to finally be watching while Hell in a Cell was going down. Every week, I would love the promos, and the hype got to me like a crack addict in the 80s. And this really was the perfect feud for a uh -huh. match. It was a feud that had been building for years. Former stable mates, the teacher and the student, they already had a WrestleMania main event. They had a rematch at Backlash. Uh -huh. The student won both times. It was personal. It was heated. And now it's time for the final match in the teacher's backyard. Yeah. As a Batista fan, I was f***ing terrified of this match because I still vividly remember Jim Ross just hyping up how dangerous this match was. And more importantly, how Triple H at that point had never lost in a Hell in a Cell mm -hmm. match before. He was 4-0. and And they would just hammer this every single a week and i would just be scared shitless i'm like damn batista might be cooked i mean what else was i supposed to think after seeing these photos and videos of triple h being some next hell in a cell demon and luckily for me this wasn't the only hell in a cell match that year because we also got randy orton versus undertaker in a feud that 110 percent deserved a hell in a cell match <laughs> and both those matches were so good so violent they were must see and they did everything mm -hmm. they could to add to the lore of hell in a cell it truly felt like there was hell in that cell i mean just look at the state of the wrestlers after the match when these matches were over it looked like they went to war it looked like they barely survived and this picture right here and that's how it should be that's the idea of getting in this structure changes you. And that's what the commentators would try to sell. And that's what you see on the wrestlers. The blood, the bruising, the, you know, the the agony that they were in. Like, they sold the idea that being in this match meant both of us are not going to be the same afterwards. But somebody has to win. And... We're going to have to go through hell to beat that other person. That's the idea. Here is iconic. Randy barely walking out alive, Taker in the shadows, the cell in full showcase. These matches were so hyped up. And when I was able to get the DVDs for these pay-per-views and watch these matches, they lived up in every single way. What was interesting was by the time I started watching these matches and started living through them, they had vastly changed from what they were in their inception, right? See, mm -hmm. back in the 90s and early 2000s, it was all about the big spot, the stunt, someone falling off, some shock factor, just crazy stuff happening. And during this era, from 2002 and onwards, these matches became more like classic cage matches, these bloody, violent brawls. And it didn't really take away from anything. It didn't really affect my experience. Obviously, every time there was a cell match, I was praying and hoping that they would go outside the cell, somebody would get thrown off, uh -huh. somebody would die. But even though that never not happened, someone I was never died. disappointed because what they did in the cell was so awesome. DX versus the McMahons was chaos. Batista yeah. and Taker was huge. You had the Hell in a Cell Godfather against Batista, who now at this point had been in a cell match. But that's what really stuck out when looking back at these matches. More often than not, like I said, these matches were delivering, but it was also special because you knew this was Undertaker and Triple H's match. Mm -hmm. Triple H and Taker were part of every single cell match from 97 till 2008. This was their specialty, and it made sense because it was like, this match is so crazy and so violent. These two idiots have clearly conquered it, and these two are the only idiots who consistently want to take part of it. Hell in a Cell up until 2008 <laughs> was perfect. Edge and Taker at SummerSlam was a classic. Once again, mm -hmm. nobody fell off the top of the cell. Nothing crazy like that. Instead, it was Edge trapped in the cell with Taker and Taker yeah. getting revenge for all the torture that Edge put him through for over a year, doing literally everything mm -hmm. that Edge did to him back to him in the cell. And what's fascinating about this match is this match didn't have blood, okay? This did take place during the PG era, technically. This was the first ever PG pay-per-view they ever had, and they still delivered an era. And this was a good match. It didn't... Would blood have been nice to see? Of course, of course. It adds a little bit more realism to what you're trying to convey. But it was still a very great Hell in a Cell match. But that's not what killed it. I'm sure he's going to talk about it. Every single way. So the future still looked bright. Little did we know. This was the beginning of the end. Yeah, From 97 to 08, end. there had only been 14 Hell in a Cell matches on pay-per-view across 11 years. Because more often than not, they usually saved it for feuds that deserved it. I don't know why Kevin Nash and Triple H took place in here, but hey, at least I had a really awesome promo video. More often than not, they did it when it made sense. Then in 2009, they ruined it all. Because the idiots at WWE simply created a pay-per-view called... Hell, Hell in a cell. cell. This shit to this day still pisses me off. Stupid. WWE in 2009 slowly began naming their pay-per-views after match types. And you know what? For some pay-per-views, it works. I'm not going to lie. It does, okay? But when they did Hell in a Cell, it, it was cooked. Hell in a Cell 09 took place. And on one night, we got three Hell in a Cell matches. Like, yo, you would think I was the prime target for this invention, right? Like, I'm the prime target for this pay-per-view. I was a kid who was 11 years old. My favorite match type was Hell in a Cell. But, guys, how do you... What the... 
is this? Even in 09, as an 11 year old, this made no sense to me. CM Punk versus The Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell match opening the pay per view? What? Cena yeah. versus Orton in a Cell match? I mean, it kind of makes sense. The feud have been going on for a while. Yeah. But did it really need a Hell in a Cell? I don't know, kind of. But you would think that if a massive match like this was happening, Cena versus Orton in a Hell in a Cell match, this would be huge, crazy promoted, so much hype. This would that, would, that would be just the one match you would want to put on there, and then everything else would just be a regular match because their feud kind of makes sense their rivalry their hatred for each other you know it kind of makes sense but they once the pay-per-view they came up with the pay-per-view idea being that it was it was done this would be the main event show closer this would be hyped up for weeks and weeks but it was just thrown together and this wasn't even the main event because the main event was dx versus legacy in a cell match which was a pretty good match i'm not denying that i, I love the idea of these two rookies finally getting clapped in a cell match against these legends hell in a cell legends i'm down but when you have two other cell matches on the show everything just gets devalued mm -hmm. especially when the show is called hell in a cell so obviously the matches are going to be in a hell in a cell there, there's yeah. no surprise factor and this is what hell in a cell became for the next decade plus we just got spammed with the most random cell matches every <sighs> october whether we liked it or not as a kid i could name you every single cell match from 97 to low 8 and i still can post 09 I, I didn't know what was going on and it was just tragic because this match like, like I said meant something this was special this was an attraction and now we were getting matches like Randy Orton versus Sheamus no disrespect to them but did this really need to be in the cell no no but they just had to have one because it was October it was Hell in a Cell pay-per-view month and it was finished in 2010 when Kane and Taker were gonna have one just because it was time for the monthly pay-per-view it's like this would be a huge massive match once upon a time Kane and Taker yeah. finally in the cell this would be hyped up like crazy this is mm -hmm. massive but nobody cared because it's like yeah they're just having it because it's October and they ended up having a decent one-on-one -on -one match it didn't feel like a cell match whatsoever it was like the most non Hell in a Cell Hell in a Cell match I'd ever seen at that point and the ending was just an angle to continue the storyline but it just truly felt like so much wasted potential yo it, it got sad it got really sad it was no longer an actual match type it just became like a call of duty gun camo it had zero <laughs> matches and the feuds because before funny you know, comparison like, we're getting mark henry versus randy Orton in the cell what happened to the game i loved man and even <laughs> when we would get some pretty good matches in the cell such as del rio versus punk versus cena super random i know but hey it was a really good match it was just kind of like well what's the point of the cell though they're just in here because once again it's it's october you can just take the cell out and they can just still have a good match that's that is the problem like he said what's the point of the cell the cell is actually supposed to be part of the feud because it's gotten so personal, so heated that you're willing to go to the extremes to destroy your opponent. But if you're just going to put on a good fucking match, what's the point of the sell? The sell at that point, I mean, we know why it's there because it's the name of the pay-per-view, but it still doesn't need to be there. They could have easily had the same exact match in any other match and the thing is the company knew this for sure they 100 knew this because when they did a hell in a cell match at wrestlemania between triple h and this Taker, was good suddenly they knew how to book cell matches again suddenly that match actually needed and it didn't have to take place in october at the hell in a cell pay-per-view suddenly the match such a fucking great match the end of a air match this was chef's kiss one of the very few times i legit thought the streak was going to end and it's right here with this super kick from Shawn Michaels right into the pedigree from Triple H only for the Undertaker to kick out and I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it because I legitimately thought the streak was over magic was back and it was amazing it was a great match all-time classic because the stipulation fit the occasion and it was perfect because it was a surprise nobody expected it but it made all the sense and that's what made these matches special back in the day when a wrestler challenged someone to a cell match it was like holy shit oh my god is that happening the crowd's going nuts jim ross starts tweaking jerry law uh -huh. like, yeah. it, it was a moment but by this era you just knew once it was october i challenge you to a hell in a cell match and the other guy's just like oh yeah i figured I figured. What do you mean? <laughs> you figured. Uh, it's October. It's the next pay per view. Duh. Of course, no one was ever going to be excited for this because everyone and their mom knew what was coming. CM Punk versus Ryback. Yay.
We knew when the matches were coming, even if we didn't want it, we were getting it. If the few didn't warrant it, didn't matter. You're getting a hell in a cell. 90% of the time, the matches didn't really need it. The cell was barely used in most of the matches. The match became so sanitized. And this is the thing, a lot of people blame, oh, PG ruined cell matches. It's like, I don't think it was the PG that ruined it because WrestleMania 28 was still PG. SummerSlam uh -huh. 08 was still PG. There wasn't any blood in there. They still tweaked, they still did their thing. And Hell in a Cell just stopped hitting because they were literally doing it for no reason. Every yeah. year, it was just the most random NPCs in these matches. No longer was Hell in a Cell a specialty for anyone. If anything, they should have taken this time to make it someone's specialty, make this someone's signature match. But no, every year, just the most random matches happening. Eventually, though, we did get some solid matches. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm not going to deny that. I remember Seth and Dean being pretty good. That was a fun one. Till the ending. Yeah. I I hate that ending. Lesnar and Taker in 2015 was the best one since Mania 28 easily. That mm -hmm. match caught a lot of people off guard and they yeah. really took it back to the classics and showed us what cell matches should be that like. That was and good too. And definitely the second half of the decade, the matches did get better. They did try to get some more of the magic back, right? The tag team Hound of Cell was awesome with the mm -hmm. New Day and Usos. The women started having some really solid matches. Uh, the only problem was they eventually made the cell red for some reason. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh my, no, we can barely see what's going on in there now. What are y'all? Oh. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh my God. Why? Oh wait, that's not enough. No, no, that's not enough butchering of this match type that used to be special. Let's have a Hell in a Cell match, a match where people basically died in the past. And let's have it ended in no contest. Oh my gosh. The fact that they even continue to have cell matches after this is crazy because personally, if I ever booked some stupid shit like this, and I got the <laughs> pushback that they did, I would have just, just destroyed the damn structure and never had a cell match after this. <laughs> now, Rollins and The Fiend was so bad that this could have been the last ever cell match, and honestly, people would have understood because by this point, we knew the company did not care yeah. anymore whatsoever. They cared less than they even did five years ago, and they barely cared five years ago that's how down bad we were but fast forward to the early 2020s and that, that just sounds weird to say the early 2020s but yeah the matches did get better i'll give them that the cell was still red and it was still depressing but i think that's <laughs> the time had passed since the golden era of the hell in a cell matches that we just kind of accepted it, it was like, yeah All right, this is it is what it is we, we lived with it the days of the 2000s so yeah, there were some good matches, even though the cell didn't like the color. There were some good matches in this particular, the Thunderdome era uh, with the Hell in a Cell. It was. Cell matches were gone. Entire generation grew up with Hell in a Cell in October being a random pay-per-view featuring random matches. It just became accepted, and I guess we were just happy with the decent matches that we did end up getting. At least it wasn't CM Punk versus Taker anymore for no reason. And by June of 2021, we had officially reached the acceptance stage when during the Thunderdome, we were getting a cell match on Raw and SmackDown and the cell matches we did get on pay-per-view. Yeah, they were solid. It just became normal. It became accepted. Mm -hmm. And the rise and fall and acceptance of the Hell in a Cell was finally complete. So leave the memories alone. But now in 2024, luckily for us, it seems like the stars are aligning once again. Mm -hmm. It feels like the magic might be back yeah Since october 2021 there have only been three of these matches seth rollins and edge tore uh -huh. the house down in saudi the cody and seth matches iconic which yep. yeah was it blessed by the torn titty <laughs> let's 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 this was good seth has been in two of these recent hell in the cells actually seth and edge has been in uh a few of these recent hell in the cells that have been fantastic on an edge tore the house down in Saudi. The Cody and Seth match is iconic, which, yeah, was it blessed by the torn titty? Of course, regardless, <laughs> a classic. And the Edge and Finn match, which, if yeah. it didn't have that damn stoppage in the middle of it, mm -hmm. could have been so good, in my opinion. Yeah. Loki feels like the match of the cell is coming back. And it's only right with Triple H at the realm, this guy who was Mr. Hell in a Cell with The Undertaker once upon a time, it makes all the sense. The amount of cell matches has slowed down so much to the point that there hasn't been one in over 500 days. And that all changes That's good. when Punk and Drew go at it in a few days. But thank the lord the cell is no longer red thank the lord there is no hell in a cell pay-per-view anymore and even though it might seem bad blood is gonna be that the yearly cell pay-per-view i can just hope and pray that next year if there isn't a cell worthy match they can still have bad blood with yeah. a cell match there but we I'm go just excited and it's just wild because finally a few that deserves a cell match a deep personal long-standing feud is finally getting the mm -hmm. cell match and you just know these two are gonna kill each other and it's as the match with the cell slowly returns i i hope i am hoping so much that they deliver here i draw I, I pray they drop a classic and then we don't see the cell for a while and only yeah. bring it out 
when it needs to be brought out. But so far, everything Facts. seems like it's heading in the right direction. It seems like the rise and fall of Hand of Cell happened, but it seems like we might be on the rise again. Think of all the possibilities of the matches we might get. Think of how epic these storylines can be when the bomb is dropped that, hey, it's gonna be a Hell in a Cell match, bucko. In the comments down below though, let me know what is your least favorite Hell in a Cell match of all time? What is the one match that just made you go like, <laughs> what am I watching? What are we doing here? RIP Hell in a Cell, I miss the old days. Other than The Fiend versus Seth, okay? Yeah. No, Other than that one. That, that was the one I was gonna say. That's the worst Hell in a Cell. I don't care what nobody say. That's, that it, that's the worst. The worst. My favorite? It's, some, it's been so many good ones, bro. So many good ones. It's really hard to choose. Obviously, the Mankind one, seeing that as a kid, will always live on in my memory. But there's so many classic ones. You, it's I can't even really... I can't even really choose on that one. So many good ones. But y'all let me know down below. Obviously, <laughs> what's the worst Hell in a Cell of all time? I know a lot of y'all are going to say the... Bray and uh Seth Rollins win, but what's the best Hell in a Cell match you guys have ever seen? And there's no wrong answer here. Y'all let me know down below what's the best and what's the worst Hell in a Cell um y'all have seen before uh in your lifetime. And also, are you guys excited? Hell in a Cell, Drew versus CM Punk. I know they're going to knock it out the park. Can't wait. But I appreciate all love support. Road two. 150k, appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See you on the next one. Peace.